What you gonna do today? Motherfucker, can't be know your plans are wet. Wake the fuck up, get the fuck up out of bed. Cake baker, wake it, bake it, get it, feed it. All right, welcome to Wake the Fuck Up, the after party. That's what I'm calling this. Steve is very disappointed in the name. I didn't say that. I just Steve I doesn't really care that. for it. What do you want to name it, man? I didn't say anything, man. After party's fine. I think the after party is a good name. It's fine. For Roll Wake the it. Fuck Up. Sure. Works for me. All right. All right. Welcome to uh, Wake the Fuck Up, the after party. Taro in the back. What's up? Slasher to my left. What's up, what's up, what's up? Rockstar, president accounted for. Scotty, what are we talking about today? Uh, I don't know. You want to talk about some of the old episodes, or we could talk about the episodes we watched tonight that haven't aired. <laughs> oh, Which the, got the, very the wild. episodes that aired. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's putting it mildly, I suppose. I don't know. One of my favorite parts of the newer episode that, that they haven't seen yet is when you continually rub your nipples. In uh, a very pleasurable fashion, which is like you're really getting into those nips, man. I have no idea, honestly, what I was thinking by that point. The honest truth, I think I said something to the effect of this earlier, is I was so drunk and none of my ideas were connecting together. Like, I kept trying to say sentences that should be like less than 10 seconds long. Yeah. That were three and a half to five and a half minute monologues. And I think I was just trying to hold them in place. Mm -hmm. And I was drunk and closed my eyes and conjured up my inner gold dust. <laughs> and kept going with it like there wasn't a camera rolling. I love when the people were like trying to yell at you to do something. And you were so drunk that you couldn't, <laughs> you didn't realize that people were yelling at you. That was a, Yeah. That was yeah. Funny. They They took the microphone from me at one point. And then I just walked over and picked up an entire stand from somewhere else in the room. I'm carrying it like an awkward, drunken dinosaur. I'm like, I found another microphone. So if you can imagine. Fuck your saying. mother, CD. What was that, Zach? I was just saying, um, so you can imagine, he's got a uh, hand over each nipple and a micro stand underneath his arm like mm -hmm. a uh, chicken wing. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was... At any point, I thought you were just going to fall. What was it you were saying earlier, Zach, that you were thinking when you were editing these videos? Uh, I felt very bad, and uh, <laughs> this show is a terrible idea, and uh, I need to go to church more. I think the, You the felt show. bad about encouraging me to do this to myself, is what you told me. The show is a great idea. We, we all know that. Allowing me to drink as much as I do, is that... Your liver can handle it. Are you sure? We'll, we'll find out. Well, I mean, you're right, though. I mean, and really, I since we started doing the show, I've tapered down my social drinking the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you and I, we used to drink every other night. I, yeah. I think we drink about once a week, maybe, now. Twice a week, maybe, depending. Yeah. And usually, yeah. we'll spit, like, a six-pack one night, and then one night, we'll actually yeah, we don't, get drunk. Yeah, we don't normally get just hammered, but... No, we get pretty hammered at least once a week. Not wake the fuck up, hammered. That's, uh... Even it's a binge drinking once a month. Well, I mean, Even, uh, I don't, I don't get that drunk. I get pretty drunk. You though. never get that drunk while we're doing the show, though. So it's it's not quite the same thing. You probably get more drunk when we're drinking just that one night a week. So you drink during the show, but you don't, you don't drink like I drink during the show. You you have I like expensive. Like but I still drink a lot. You seem to hold it together so much better than I do. Yeah, but you drink tons, <laughs> and on camera, so it's uh, <laughs> it's a different thing. It's, and, I'm behind and, the camera. I, you, you don't see my reactions or my me like if I drop something or whatever, you know. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot different. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, out of the episodes we've done so far, what's your favorite? You, you know, know? I, I really don't know. I mean, all of them when we do them, I feel like it may be the most shameful moment of my life every time when we finish. Mm -hmm. Like it's it really is. It's always a mixture of excitement, glee, and shame. Right. Dark, dark shame. Like, what have I put into this universe? Shame. But then when I see it, it's always, there's something that I always like that I didn't expect. The Jason's episode surprised me the most because I felt like all we did was talk shit the entire time to each other. Uh, but it turns out we actually covered a lot of stuff and uh, yeah. had some pretty interesting back and forths. Uh, I'd say that one is at least the most surprisingly good one. Um, yeah. 
That the Jason. From what I thought it was to what it was when we yeah put it together. The lead singer Jason V is pretty quick on his feet when it comes to coming back at you. I thought like when he put uh, the stuff Mom's in the pretty songs, quick and going down my cut. Oh, when he, oh! when he put the shit in the songs, uh, that's pretty. I mean, yeah, that's quick as shit. It's like you know, you got this song that you know, <laughs> and he just throws in uh, fucking your mom. That's pretty good yeah, shit. Yeah, right that's there. uh, yeah, it's uh, whatever. All right, so uh, chess beat. Right now, when we're filming this, we got four episodes uh, aired. Right now, we've got three more that we've edited, but we haven't put up yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's go through uh, part one. Is there like a like a highlight out of part one with Kevin Morris? <laughs> you know, I really even after having watched, it, I have very little idea what we did on that show. Uh, the only thing I you ever forgot the uh, hour of Zach and Friends that was going beforehand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was we. I I had this masterful idea that since we're filming a talk show for Scott's show, without asking him, well, I decided we we're going to do twenty game reviews for Zach's Zach's uh, YouTube channel, which is not going to happen. Zach doesn't like to edit things. Um, no, no, that, no, I'm not even going to get into that. I mean, just, uh, let's talk about the Amped Guard videos. Zach talked me into going That's to funny. Tennessee one time to uh, film Listen, interviews. Everybody with everybody suffered because of the Amped Guard videos. Oh, Trust me. He asked me to go to Tennessee with him to uh-huh. film some videos with this Amped Guard group. It's like, it'll be weird, Steve, it'll be different, we'll go down, it'll be fun, man. It's uh, down in Tennessee, it's a couple hours drive, uh... It's called the Winner's Edge Men I was like, all right, man, we'll go down and do this. We film this shit. We're like, the whole ride back, we're like, oh, man, that was practically good. Those guys were smart. I mean, different, because we thought they'd be way nerdier. Way, way nerdier. Yeah, they were, it was really... They were very... Yeah. Into, to, they took themselves very seriously well, I, I, and had I, very <laughs> articulate stories. It was not the normal uh, Stephen Hensley interview. But you're forgetting about the... Um, what, what was it? About uh, three hours we drove um, out of the way? Uh-huh. And I uh, had to backtrack. Uh-huh. And then uh, during the capturing process, the, the tape uh, broke up so much, it's it's unusable, except for like maybe three or four seconds at a time. Mm-hmm. So. That's the uh, story. Now, what Zach told me earlier was that he had to recapture it. <laughs> That's what you said a few months ago. So uh, what, yeah. The story's changed, huh? I, I feel that you're trying to lead the listeners... A stray? No. Someone's, that's that's all right. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, uh, first episode, what I do remember the most clearly uh, mm. of any real relevance that stuck with me is the uh, car bombs. Because oh, yeah, Kevin yeah. and I Definitely had good. so much of that fucking Irish cream in our mustache after we did those. Um, <laughs> it, it looks ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. But when I, when I was watching it after you edited it, when I watched that part where we were doing the car bombs and that ridiculous series of belts. This is like a minute and a half of belching like after, like, trying to force it out. It was hard. It was really hard. But somewhere in the middle of watching that, I was like, alright, this is where our show is. Somewhere in these moments. Because yeah. we weren't really sure what we were doing with yeah, the right. show yet. Well, I mean, we really had no idea how we wanted it to go. That's true. I, I planned like 500 different things, which none of my plans ever work anyway. I think the original it, it, plan was maybe for like a... Uh... Well, like a forty-minute show or something. No, it's no, it's 30, supposed to be much right? shorter. Or Twenty-two, thirty. We want, like we want it to be between twenty and twenty-five, the... something like that. But uh, they've all been over thirty. No, no, not all of them. I think Jason's were like right under thirty. I, right? IR was a little bit under. 30, oh, was he? Okay. I think. I think. I can't, maybe I borderline. Remember. I can't remember. Yeah. The Kevin Morris um, last was longer, but it was the first episode, and I thought it was a really good episode. It, it, well, he was really good at. Uh, for somebody that never had a chance to see the show anyway before they came on, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. it was a very good sport about I mean, we told him what to expect, but I don't think it was what he expected at all. He thought maybe we'd have like a, uh, a webcam pointed at yeah. us or something like that. Right, not whole. Yeah. I mean, you guys have a pimp setup. Uh, we're fortunate in that regard. Mm-hmm. Thanks to our balls. Yeah. Yeah. Dwayne Muncy of Cucumber. I don't Cucumber. think it's soft now. I don't think he wants his name associated with us. <laughs> thanks, Maul. I, I, uh, just a thanks, Big Daddy. <laughs> he, he's we'll just cut that, he, cut that part. Out. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's a podcast. Who's going to listen to this, right? Hopefully lots of people <laughs> one day. That'd be cool. Ke- Kevin's the only um, episode we've done that I actually cut footage from because it was so long. So let's move on. Our zombie was uh, second episode. Yep. And then I remember the day he did his, they were all running late. Like, we had three mm-hmm. That's right. Three different tapings, and I was I him. think the Renfields were supposed to go on first, possibly. <coughs> if possible. Um, 
But they ended up, they stayed down in Charleston that night. They right. put all the finishing touches on their album, which was cool because they talked about when they came down here. Mm-hmm. So we got that kind of pimp exclusive on the uh, Renfield show. But IR even was rain late that night. He just yeah. happened to miraculously still get there, like way ahead of them. Uh, and we did his show. And he and Tristan are, are probably the most non-interview guests that we've had on the show. And they, they'll openly right, yeah. and freely admit yeah. that. I think he may have even said something about the show that he, doesn't do a lot of interviews. Um, mm-hmm. They did really well, though. They, they did. They did. Uh, very low key, but I mean, very articulate. It helped mm-hmm. that I was more sober for that episode than probably anything we've done. I hadn't really started drinking yet at that point. Yeah. Um, he quickly so, made up for it afterwards. Well, yeah, yeah you know, we had about an hour lull between that episode and the Renfield showing up. Uh, you know, I, I like that episode. And then, uh, of course, Vinny and the boys showed up. Uh, Dick Ramsey's. Uh, Fiendy, Lucio. I love Lucio. Mm-hmm. Really, a really fun mascot, Lucio. Uh, man's best friend. It's a werewolf who drinks virgin's blood. Is what I think I said on the show. Yeah, and one of the first uh, musical, actually the first musical guest on the show, which is cool shit. Were say. they the first? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my! You're absolutely right. You know, I ne- I don't think we even necessarily intentionally planned it that way, but we didn't really. that is really cool. And. uh Vin, God bless him. He is he is good at playing ball with me, and I yeah I'm a handful. Um, he, he is, and Dick 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 was vocal in that too. Not quite yeah. as vocal as Vincent, but he uh he was right on there with us, right down the trenches. Mm-hmm. And Lucio was just causing chaos everywhere. They still didn't feed the fiend. No, uh, I, I tried. Yeah. I tried while he was singing. Mm-hmm. Fiend has free hands. Vincent's like singing and involved in the song, and like I tried to pass banana behind his back, and he catching. Every single fucking time. Feed the Fiend, damn it. Feed the Fiend. It was one of my favorite episodes. I don't know if it's my was, favorite, but it's one of my favorites. It's really good. And, you know, it's really hard to call a favorite because yeah. I like all of them so much for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Sometimes because I think the guests do better than me. Sometimes because I think I just do really well with a particular guest. Uh, yeah. Really, we've had a couple musical guests since then. And uh, the Jasons, their arch nemesis, have been on there, and uh, yeah, they actually came on after the Renfields. They showed up later than yeah, the Renfields. They were oh, they were mouthy too. They, were. they I love that they tried to make peace, like thirty seconds after they threw my Vincent Renfield photo on the ground and shattered it, and they're like, you know, we're tired of that beef. We uh, we ain't got no problems. You know, they're actually I'm like, and like all I can think in my drunk mind, um, is she just threw my fucking photo on the ground. <laughs> And then, like, 30 seconds later, they're back to talking shit after I start talking shit. And uh, the peace treaty kind of fell apart. And then I got hammered drunk, and they played a catchy song. Mm-hmm. And uh, if there's anything that's we figured out, if I'm on camera and guest is playing a song, even if I don't know the song that well, once I am firmly aware of what the course is, I'm officially the new lead backup singer of the band. Don't forget about the uh, sexual assault on their mother. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you did uh, yeah. have uh, some sort of oral sex with their mom's uh, head. Well, to be fair, at that point, they, they'd they taken the time to say, fuck you, Hensley, in a song, yeah. and they'd uh, also paraphrase Crazy Ralph to, uh, I don't want to wear a burlap sack, just want to fuck Hensley's mom in the ass. And uh, Great love, great love. <laughs> I, uh, I sing that now. During I the felt it song. was uh, warranted at that point. Right, oh, I feel you. Then, like, two minutes later, I learned the course of the song and uh, agreed to go on tour with him. And, well, that's that's alcohol for you. No. And speaking but, of the peace treaty, man, they, they, they're they supposed to give you a beer and a porno. They yeah, give the, you, uh, what, what was in the bottle? Bottle of piss. They made me drink their piss. What you threw on Jason V? For those of you who haven't figured it out yet, Vincent Renfield and Jason V are the same person. They're the same person, but there's this microcosm of fans out there. I don't, I don't believe it. They're not the same person. No, they are. They are. They, are. they talk about it on the extra cast. This is old news, Scotty. You know this, don't yeah. you? Don't you care. saw him walking around. I mean, good God. Come on, man. Where's your common sense? You try to fool the fans all the time. Some of the people, some of the time. K-fabe all the people, some of the time. Yeah, you just broke kayfabe. You just broke kayfabe. So did Vinren. Vinren can break kayfabe. I can break kayfabe here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, is, it is kind of having broken down that wall there. Mm-hmm. It's kind of amazing the way that he uh, talks so much effective shit about each band in right. each band. Um, and the fact that anybody is fooled by it. It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. And more amazing is the uh, rant he goes on at ShakaCon where he's like, I'm tired of this horror punk bullshit, this pogo punk rock nonsense, yada, 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 yada. 
is pretty much word for word the same rant that he is Vincent Renfield at a Renfield's concert that there's a video of on YouTube goes on before they play one of their songs. The fans at that show boom too. Like while he's saying that, and then they go back to tune when he starts really. the song. But I think it's ironic because it's the same the same diatribe. Mm -hmm. Except he's just not saying bad things about the Renfields. He's saying bad things about yeah. horror, pogo, punk rock. It's a... Uh, I don't know. I was just cruising through one night, clicking on Renfield's song. And on you there. found uh, one of his he said the I, exact same thing. That's yeah, I was like, this is fucking... I thought about posting on Facebook and tagging him and the Jason Smee. Like, I feel like there's uh, an interview question that needs to be asked here. You should have just posted on the Jason, like, yeah, your lead singer is now stealing quotes from Vincent Renfield is what you should have posted. Oh, I should have. You should have. Oh, man. Um... And they took your porno back, so they, they gave did. you. I didn't get beat off of that thing one time. Porno. They they acted like they did, so it was I know. Really still kept. I thought uh, they were looking out for me. You know, I drink a lot. They yeah. thought, you know, this guy needs to jerk it more, right. lower that uh, heart rate down. Jerking yeah. it's good for the heart rate. Uh, National Masturbation Awareness Month or day or week or something is actually a real thing. Really? Yeah, yeah, uh, and mm -hmm. it should be. You know, they should encourage teenagers to masturbate more. I think there'd be less uh, incidence of teen pregnancy. Mm -hmm. or maybe more I'm not really sure but I think everybody would be a whole lot calmer they seem angry all the time like some of them truly haven't figured out how to bust a nut on their own yet <laughs> right, right. and I feel like an angry teenager that hasn't figured out how to get off without help would be pretty pissed I'm <laughs> pretty fucking angry all the time good god I mean for realsies right Zach right Right. I think we're in agreement on that okay. okay, let's go next episode we haven't aired yet next episode is Wayward Girls episode well, one. Oh, shit almighty you know, I, I haven't watched the actual first episode of that yet. Uh, mm -hmm. We we watched the second episode tonight. Oh, yeah. The second episode is where you get really fucking <laughs> yeah, hammered. Yeah, it yeah. is. That, uh, at times, feels borderline unbearable for me to watch. <laughs> I'm so, so very drunk. And I really do love these girls so much. They're sweet girls. And I, I am so trashed. I'm so much more trashed than on everything else we have ever done. We've done quite a few things trashed. But, uh, wow. Wow. Lots of good footage. Lots of... Uh, Are you... Sh well, there's footage anyway. Um, yeah. The latest cover photo was uh, from that episode. Yeah. Where you got the pasties on and you're grabbing your nips. Yeah, and then there's a belly shot from the... <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a laser beam one. episode that follows the way we're girls, uh... <laughs> The laser beams are really good, too. Wow. Yeah. You know, the the girls were good sports about everything, though. Um, some of those girls are as dirty as we are. Some of them are a little more respectable. <laughs> yeah, I would um, agree with that. I think 70 to 80% of them had no idea what the show format was. Mm -hmm. it's, some of them seemed outright... your sister knew what the show format I, was. I think you may be right. I don't think they knew that we got... Plastered? Plastered, plastered. And so incredibly vulgar. Right, right. We actually, you toned it down, I think, a little bit. And yeah, and you, somehow made it more awkward. You, yeah, I think yeah. it's because you were just trying to Trying to around skirt around things. It. But once again, my drunk brain at that point is a maze. So trying to think of around what I would normally say it mm -hmm. created force. And eventually that maze was a labyrinth. There were points in the middle of sentences where you could see where I stopped talking. Where I can't remember which direction I was turning or where I was traveling in the maze. And I just feel trapped. I feel like all of a sudden the room's become very large and there's an arena clamoring for my death. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I have no idea what to say about those episodes. Uh, somehow, accidentally, throughout, there are scattered random facts. Uh-huh. And legitimate information, and I think there's a show. Was it May twenty fourth? Maybe yeah, May twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How the hell did I remember that much? Um, but yeah, uh, they t get to talk about some stuff. But there's a lot of me taking such an excessive amount of time to get a sentence out. Yeah, uh, and I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. And then uh, right after that, we did that laser beam show. And like right before, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. No, I think you you right. guys were even talking oh, about yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know how you did it either, man. Uh, I thought for sure it was going to turn out to be way worse. It turned out really well. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, but I thought it was yeah. going to be like you weren't going to be able to get out a sentence. <laughs> it, it was. I was very worried at that point because. Because uh, I'd just fallen in the floor. Yeah. Like 
face plant like bent over Dutch boy style. It was a uh, Jesus. Yeah, we were all a little worried. Uh, What's a Dutch boy? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's an expression I heard somewhere, and I fucked it up too. <clears throat> oh, okay. Sounds okay. Thank you. A Dutch boy. They probably get really fucked Sounds up and just pass out. Maybe. I don't know. Is Dutch that... people. I would like to get drunk with the Dutch. The for the I mean there is the term Dutch courage, so I imagine they're drinkers. I guess so, yeah. Why do you use that term instead of that? I mean there we go. Right? Right? Right. 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 So I guess we can talk about real quick, um, a bunch of people's donated trailers, which is cool. So, oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Some names. Throw out some names. Well, how about before we throw out those names on okay. the trailers? No offense to the people on the trailers, and we're probably gonna forget some of you. Uh, unless Scotty has a list, do you have a list anywhere? In my, in my, in my brain. Is it really that accurate? No, that's not that accurate. But okay. I know a lot. Uh, but someone we definitely should give props to the man who helped us acquire so many of those trailers. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we would have got. Uh, even remotely, probably twenty percent of those trailers no. on our own. No. Uh, Mac Brewer. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mac. Who writes for Horror Society? Uh, threw a shout out uh, over his Facebook. I think even wrote us up a nice article, mm -hmm. and then followed all that up with, and we got quite a few trailers. We got what thirty some trailers. Yeah, yeah. From quite a quite a few very kind directors who were willing to mm -hmm. send them our way, and thank all of you. Uh, and then he wrote us a write up for our fourth episode, yeah, asking cool. people to donate again, um, and. He says he'll keep writing us some stories on some of the new episodes as they come out, which is awesome. But uh, and we plan to have Mac on the show too. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think he's going to do a movie coming up, but it's going to be it's going to be a while. But it should yeah. be probably this year. Uh, he wants to do it. I think uh, we'll probably film his in June whenever we get ready to film uh, mm -hmm. his movie, which I I think may be titled "Pray for Max." I don't know if he's going to change that or not, but okay. I think that was the uh, working title. I think it was Pray for Max. Yeah, P R E Y. I think he even sent me the script. I'm pretty sure he did because that. Yeah. Well, he uh, he, he, he has a, a lot about he, it. There, well, there's it a Facebook cool. page for it too. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, we'll be working on that in June. I'm going to be acting for Mac Attack and uh, looking forward to that. Um, help me out with some of the trailers here. Of course, uh, we started off the first show. We got a lot of trailers from, from our Razor friends at Sharp, Razor yeah. Sharp. Um, uh, Eamon Hardman was kind of to send those our way. Uh. That's a, yeah, we got uh, some trailers for the pork chop movies, all the pork chop movies, and for uh, zombie babies. Yeah, you didn't get that. Uh, I, was, I was getting there. I'm not drunk. Oh, you, tonight. no, no, no. Well, you're drinking. I'm no. Well, I'm. I've had like two beers. I'm a little yeah. cotton mouthy, but uh, so I, no, I can. Uh, the first I can see just... my, the way I can see through the clouds in my mind a little right. more clearly tonight. You're not as hammered, is what you're saying. Well, in the first episode, yeah, we didn't have any oh, trailers. Maybe I'm in my natural element. And Razor Sharp lets use all of their trailers. We use Pork Chop 1, 2, 3, and uh, Zombie Babies. Right, right. And so uh, on the second episode, what did we use? I know we used Pork Chop 1. Oh, God, Scott, if you're going to ask me we used, who we um, use specifically in each episode, you may as well ask me to uh, break down the periodic table for me, which I can't do. I mean, you could just throw, I mean, it doesn't be episodes. I know we used, uh, we'd I know used we got two Sam stuff from our Bonfire Films, Hanover House. We definitely yeah. had a trailer for Hanover yeah. House. Uh, Cemetery, uh, which I think is one of Vinrin's uh, favorite upcoming flicks, yeah, if I'm not Cemetery, mistaken. Yeah. Was, wasn't that one? I think he talked about it a little bit on Extracast, yeah. maybe. We had uh, Snow Shark from Sam Colliana, and also, uh, I think it was Legend of Six Fingers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jake uh, Fertig donated a, um, well, he's got, he's got a cartoon he's going to give us and we're going to start airing, but <clears throat> he gave us a trailer for his uh, upcoming, like, uh, webisodes. All right. Uh, Rudiger Panucci, we have a trailer for Radio Free Charleston. Um, the Loon trailer was cool. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, one of the trailers that were really cool. Hanover House was awesome. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I did. Uh, see, Morbid was really cool. Morbid, we got two trailers. Uh, oh, Chuck, Chuck Connery. Connery. Yeah. yeah, I like Chuck. He's uh, we've Nation interacted films. a couple of times on uh, Facebook. He's nice. I've dude. actually listened to the Zombies, uh, Zombies Don't Run Zombie. dot net yeah. podcast, and it's really good too. I haven't got to listen to his podcast yet. It's good. <clears throat> Is he strictly horror? Yeah, for the most part, they're doing I'm a lot of horror. Completely fine with that. We really do, it's, Scotty. It's shameful. We uh, don't go to the list. reunion was one. Didn't they have one like right after that too, also, where a guy was actually ground. wearing "Don't go to the reunion"? Yeah, the shirt. campground. The guy was wearing okay. "Don't go to the reunion." Okay. Uh, I think it's Slasher Studios because I listen to Slasher Studios podcast. Today, and I think it's Steve and a guy named Kevin, mm -hmm. and uh, they were it was really good too, really entertaining. So, 
I think we'll have to revisit this topic. When yeah, we have the sure. full list in front of us. There's so many people there, and uh, the the thing that I really want to eventually do is try to get copies of all these movies so yeah. that we can watch. Um, Make them die sleazy. Send us a trailer. Yeah. Well, okay. Chuck I don't offered. Remember his name right off. I don't think I had an email address made yet, but he offered to send me a screener link link for uh for one of his flicks. We should take him up on and maybe Who did? talk it up. Connery. Chuck. Oh. Was it morbid? Probably morbid. Probably morbid. I think it was morbid. I'd like morbid. to see that. I would like to see that. Uh, Chuck, if you're listening, I've made an email address since then, but I forgot what it was, so I'm going to make another one. Or you should just email Scott at... Melvin Scott Greg at gmail. Yeah, we, from now on, anybody that asks me... Just send it to me on Facebook. For an email address, it's going to get Scott's email address. Mm-hmm. Steve doesn't know how to keep an email address for some reason. I I, I don't know how to use technology for anything that isn't watching our videos, really. I'm very, I'm not good at it. People, for some reason, this cracks me up. This is this is was a side thing for me. People frequently assume I work for the same company as you guys. They contact me on Facebook or try about stuff for you guys, or they try to contact me through your office. <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> like, I have no idea how to do one single thing you guys do that isn't carry a piece of heavy equipment and set it down here while waiting nervously for it to not to break and for Dwayne to set it up. Short of helping you guys move stuff into a building, I could never do anything. See, you at this video. It would, be, it would be me walking into a room, looking up tutorials on YouTube for five and a half hours, mm -hmm. Walking to the store, buying a bottle of scotch while I bang the computer against the wall, waiting for it to shatter. Wake up in the morning covered in vomit and hangover. I guess you guys make me look responsible. Yeah, sometimes. There's some people out there that hate you for that illusion when they find out the truth. Who are those I Hate the Outlaw Rockstar Facebook page? It's a real Facebook page. Started by my sister. Well, well I guess you wanted to wrap this one up? Why do we want to wrap it up? I'm having a good time. Oh, we don't have to wrap it up. Uh, we want to I wish I wish that's what she'd say more often. What wrap it up? No, you, you don't have to wrap it up. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, well, okay. What do you want to talk about? I almost wish we would have named this Bearback now. You want to name the podcast Bearback? Yeah, that's too vulgar. I don't agree with that. <laughs> Why it's too vulgar? No. Let's talk about. Uh, well, I I do want to talk about this. What we watched the other night. Uh, nobody can see this. I'm holding up a video. VHS to a, to a webcam the world's never going to see. Slaughterhouse. Dude, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I like had never watched uh, Slaughterhouse before. Um, I've seen it once before. And you, I got you, this off Eddie. Yeah. I, you had mentioned, uh, Amy and I talked about how it was one of those movies that served as inspiration for the pork chop movies, but I'd mm -hmm. never seen this. And it's, it's one of those micro-budget movies that's perfect in every way for knowing exactly what it is at every step. Like, it's creepy, but only in certain points where it's right. Yeah. And it, it feels natural, but so, so much of it is just such very good humor and such very weird music. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's got such weird music. I, I, I love when horror films do that, when they have, like, that real quirky soundtrack for whatever reason mm -hmm. that seems out of place, yet perfectly in place. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Just some weird... I just like yeah. 80s pop music over people getting slaughtered. It's kind of funny. Yeah. I, uh... Ravenous is one of those movies. Uh, if anybody has not watched Ravenous, by the way, it it might be my favorite horror movie of all time. I'm not even sure if it really qualifies as a horror movie. Does it qualify as a horror movie, really? Mm, nah, I mean, you watch I think it. It's more suspense. It's esque because it's it's based yeah. off the Wendigo legends. Yeah. Um, and it, it is violent, but I, I don't know if it's if calling it a horror movie meets somebody's expectations of a horror movie. But I I do love it. And it's very cool. And it's the soundtrack for it is so abnormally weird. It's like that weird instrumental thing going on the whole time that's so like upbeat at almost inappropriate moments. Mm -hmm. um, I've only seen that once. You showed it to me once. You should watch it another ten times. I liked it, though. I think I have two copies, so I'll give you one. What do you got them on? VHS? DVD? DVD. I'll take the copy. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it ever came out on VHS. I don't think it did. I remember when it came out, like all of my theater friends... Loved it, and they watched it forever for like off and on for a year in the green room when we still had it. And I don't think I watched it once while they were watching, and then I went home for Christmas break. Mm -hmm. Um, like the year after their big ravenous craze and started to die out, and they were only once watching it once every so often. 
and it was on one of the pay-per-view channels. Nothing was on. Folks were asleep. Had a couple drinks. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm gonna watch this movie. So I, I went ahead and rented it on pay-per-view, and it's like three bucks or something. I was just like, watch. I was like, fuck, this is awesome. I love this. So I had like two or three weeks where I was off from school, but every night I rented it. I never asked my dad. I never told my parents. I didn't hear about it again until I think like a month or two later. My dad called me. He's like, yeah, I have a sixty dollar bill for uh, a pay-per-view <laughs> called Ravenous. I was like, yeah, it yeah. Sounds like a porno too. So. <laughs> I'm uh, I, I'm getting work so you check soon, Dad. I'll, I'll take care. I should have just bought the movie. I could have bought the movie like three times at that yeah. point. It sounds like an anal porno to me. Like if you were a parent and you got a bill for sixty dollars and the movie title was <laughs> Ravenous, you would think this guy is watching anal sex porno. I mean, am I right? You know, I'll give you that one. That's uh, <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's a uh, I don't know. God, I love that movie, though. I, I feel like that's a movie that not a lot of people know about, either. Mm -hmm. kind, kind of like Intruder. Like, yeah. Intruder's an excellent like, 80s slasher flick, and uh never watched it till you uh, till you put it in with that one night. Like, we should watch it as Danny Hicks. Yeah. I was like, fuck, I love Danny Hicks. And I watched it, I was like, fuck, Danny Hicks is a goddamn national treasure. Why isn't this man doing more A-list movies right now? He should be. They, they have a lot of cool death scenes in that. Danny's a cool dude, too. We got to meet Danny yeah. Shotgun this year. Did you get to yeah. talk to him very much? Uh, not a whole lot. I did talk to him. I told uh, him that I loved Intruder, and it was way underrated, and it is. I love the ending, too, because it, it really does leave it open. I uh, I got to sit down and talk with him for, I don't know, probably about 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, Kay had to do something. She was keeping the company at the table. Told me I should sit and talk to him for a little while. He's super friendly dude, man. Super friendly yeah. dude. Very open. Uh, told me quite a few cool stories. Uh did he party with Charlie Sheen? I, he he spent some time uh, with Charlie Sheen, and uh, we'll let the uh, listeners' imaginations yeah. run with yeah. where that could take you. A any any stories with Charlie Sheen are best told by those who were with Charlie Sheen. Exactly. But uh, Danny Hicks has had some fun during his days on this earth. Yeah. And uh, he, he's he's a he's a real cool dude. And uh, he was he's also uh, for those of you that keep up with uh, our work with Razor Sharp Studios, Danny Hicks is the voice of Elrond, the horny robot in those movies, and he's very proud of that, too. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I thought that was really cool when we were talking to him at Shaka Khan, uh, and in his interviews for uh, news articles and stuff uh, leading up to Shaka Khan, he talked a lot about being in the Razor Sharp movies and how, like, happy he was to be a part of those, and he, yeah. he I mean, he's not just, like, they paid him the money he did, and then he puts it over because he's a professional, like, he knows about them, he's watched them. Right. Uh, I also do remember, I will share this one with the listeners, because right. I feel like this helps somebody else out. When we were walking around, uh, well, not walking around, when we were sitting, watching other people walk around, uh, Missy Don, who was walking around oh. dressed as pig oh. girl, Zach Taro has just walked into a door and is playing out. Ah! Ah! A la Peter Griffith. Uh. <laughs> but what I was going to say, uh, Missy Don was walking around uh, in the pig girl get up, <laughs> and Danny and I were watching her, and she pulls the mask off, and he's like, now that is a damn shame. That is a damn shame. You got the girl with the hottest ass here, and she's walking around wearing that. That is a damn shame. Hmm. Uh, I kind of enjoyed that. We told that to Eamon and Missy, I think, later that yeah. week, and they got a pretty big kick out of it. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Yeah. I also bought like $100 worth of Rinfield's merchandise and gave it out. Yeah, you bought me a shirt. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. I got Thank Zach's you. shirt. Thanks. I, yeah, yeah, I got a Penny and Ella shirt. Got me a shirt. I got a shit ton of buttons. Yeah. I bought a bunch of buttons for the Razor Sharp table. I bought uh, a couple DVDs there, too. I bought a lot of merchandise. I got a Shaka Khan shirt. Got a Chris Woodall art print. I love Chris Woodall. Wolverine Chris Woodall forever. You bought an Our Zombie plushie. Did you mention that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, I got a CDC zombie. Then when he came down here for the show, mm -hmm. uh, he showcased a lot of his plush horror stuffed animal things. And uh, he gave me a Santa zombie yep. and gave us a, uh, a pork chop stuffy as well, yep. which lives in Scotty Slash's room when he's not living on the set. Yeah, he sleeps in my bed when I'm, when I'm away. There's rumors he may get to fuck a hot girl soon. Who? Pork chop. Oh. It is possible. Yeah, you never know. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear he has a camera friend. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a celebrity porno tape? It would be a celebrity porno tape. I feel like it's it a is. Sport shop. Not right, right. I mean, he's had three films. Mm. <laughs> you know, and 
I, I, I think, going back to our uh, talk show, Wake the Fuck Up, um, we've been really lucky. One thing we were, we were worried about uh, when we were starting off is how hard it may or may not be to get guests yeah. for the show. And uh, especially after the first show aired, we're like, yeah. this may not be everybody's cup of tea. We knew some people would like it. Yeah. But we weren't sure how many people that would want to do interviews about anything they uh, anything they were involved with, how many people would really want to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially where we are, a lot of the people we've had on the show have had to travel a pretty good bit. Right, right. But we've actually had people start contacting us wanting to be on the show. Yeah. Um, the great Johnny Blast is going to be an upcoming guest on the show. Um, super looking forward to that. And Johnny's out of control. Fuck. Yeah. He may be more out of control than I am. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, well, let's I've never take, seen Johnny draw. Let's, but... let's take the cuffs off Johnny. Yeah. Here, let's, uh, where do you think that's going to go? For the audience that doesn't know Johnny Blast, he is a professional wrestler. Right. And an actor. Yep. And, uh, he faced, I guess his claim, well, one of his claims of fame is he wrestled, uh, Adam Pierce for the NWA World Heavyweight Championships. That was pretty fun. Yeah, that's true. It was, uh, and one of my favorite matches. I well, was, it was like episode two hundred. I think it was three hundred and one, three hundred two. Three hundred. You're right. Is We're on three hundred. Three hundred and one. Three hundred one. Three hundred one. Yeah, yes. three hundred one. Yeah, you're right. Because the uh, next show he tagged we up actually, with uh, Eugene Stroh against Pierce and Erickson. And, we actually uh, Boris Dragoff took that match and sent it to Jim Cornette because uh, he was talking to Jim Cornette about some radio work and stuff. So yeah, I think. Possibly Jim Cornette watched that match, which is pretty fucking cool. It is but cool. But you got to call a match that Jim Cornette possibly watched. You know, and of all the world title matches we got called from the National Wrestling Alliance, uh, honestly, that one was my favorite so far. Um, and uh, we're, we're on a podcast, and I've, I feel fairly safe that people in the world are uh, mm -hmm. in a bit on the wrestling scene and know how things work regardless of how people want to uh, want to believe that's possible to fool them again. I that uh, dog and pony shows over. Heenan's right. That that part of magic in the business is killed. Uh, but a lot of times when you have those matches, there's never a decisive win, especially in the territory system. Like yeah. nobody wants their local guy to lose, and the uh, world champion certainly, and, unless there's been a decision made, isn't going to be losing that title that night. Um, right. But Johnny got pinned flat out there. But I didn't think it took anything away from him in the match. Yeah. If anything. His is the match that I want to go back and watch the most because it's yeah. a start to finish ending. It's a whole story. Yeah, here it is. And it's a good story. And they, I thought they did a good job making it stronger at the end when uh, Lance and Boris and yeah, um, what's Boris's assistant? Uh, it's Draven. Draven. Mike Mike Draven came out and they started beating the shit out of the ref and Johnny and then Stro and Eugene came out and saved Johnny. I thought it was pretty cool. And that they was ended good. up having the that big six man, six man main event, uh, week, which was one of our best, one of the best main events we ever had. Yeah, I uh, thought it was a really good main event. Oh, it was great. It was great. It was good times back in the day. That's when I was working with Dean, and Dean was a Dean was a joy to work with. Loved working with Dean. Mm -hmm. um, I've loved working with most everyone I've ever worked with for one reason or another, except Jonathan Styles. I'm just kidding. I, I love John. John's a John's a dork. He's a dork ass bitch. But you know he's my dork ass bitch, and he cares. Probably, probably more than anybody ever gives him credit for. He cares. I've never had anybody ask me for so much frequent advice in my life. And uh, towards the end of uh, our our time at Mountain State, all around, he was doing probably some of his best work. That will never make the air. Never got it or put together because uh, of what well, the money ran out for it uh, mm -hmm. due to uh, stuff that happened. Stuff that <clears throat> happened. We won't talk about that. Well, we can. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I don't give a shit. But no, no. If you, I think people know. If you can't say anything nice, you say we thank you for your time. Right. Uh, moving on, it ended for one reason or another, and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But had some good work there, in between point start and finish. Mm -hmm. Taro, you've been strangely quiet. Let's talk mm -hmm. about your let's plays, bro. Uh, what about them? Tell the folks what what we do. Uh, well, if they don't know what a let's play video is, let's talk. Let's talk about defining what a let's play video is. A little too, a little too drunk to be talking. So. Uh, let's play Sorry. videos is when you play a game <coughs> and show people how to play that game, or you just talk through yeah, the whole thing. Just talk. Just. Are we supposed to show people stuff? I don't feel like we ever do that. 
We're what? usually when we do let's plays. Uh sometimes, but sorry, half the time guys, we're sorry. figuring out the controls. Usually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's yeah, it's got a different definition. It's not really a <clears throat> showing people. I guess it's just you're you're playing and you're gonna show people how you play that video game, whether you've never played it before or not. I guess. Yeah. Would that be more accurate? Uh, pretty much. Yeah, it depends. It's either you're either just showing off their aspects of the game, or just showing someone like your like there's the blind plays where people just playing oh, okay. the game for the blind. first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the first time ever. But uh, it all depends on what you're, what the game is, and what you're trying to do with it. We've had some fun let's mm -hmm. plays though. Twitch is uh, Twitch TV is doing one right now, and uh, it's called Twitch Plays Pokemon, and uh, it's this guy who's been playing the uh, Pokemon Red, the original, and uh, has been receiving directions from like the chat room. Huh. And so going by that, so. Wait, 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 wait. Was that the one I was watching the other night where they did the League of Legends one? League of Legends one? Which one? It's like, everybody's like yelling at him and telling him what to do and like getting pissed. Oh, no. That's uh, League of Children. Oh. That was like pretty dead on from what I've seen like from the bullshit when you're playing. Pretty much, yeah. That's uh, pretty much every game of League of Legends. Yeah. It's, uh, just angry people. Very, very angry people. Rock on. Oh, for those of you who don't know, Zach and I are going to be doing a new show. That's right. Called Cute Cat Road Show. Where. Are... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse him for just a second. Uh, <coughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. The Jesus. parliament is very hot. Amen. It, tobacco is an evil drug, Scotty. I'm sorry. How dare you accuse me of smoking a parliament? Do you have a cigarette? I got a parliament that you were smoking on just now. You're choking up. No, I don't have a parliament. Can I have a parliament? What are you choking up for? Huh? I got some smoke in my lungs. Okay, so you were saying? Anyway, um, what were we just talking about? My short-term memory has been affected. Mm. Mine has two, actually. I really don't remember. Well, something game-oriented. No, no, it wasn't! We're doing wasn't? a new show called Cute Cat oh, yeah, Road Show! Yeah, that's it. It's me and our friend, uh, is it Galadriel? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Galadriel Don Lucas. We're going to travel to people's houses, and we're going to interview them about their cats, and we're going to play with their cats, and, like, use cat toys and play with them, and, like, interview people that are crazy and have, like, photo albums filled with cat pictures, and we're going to wear ugly cat sweaters and ugly cat shirts, and, uh, we're going to be really, really nice and not cuss at all, and showcase a different side of life. A different side of the Outlaw Rocks. A different side. I have levels, you know. I'm like, a layers. I'm like an onion. You peel back one layer, there's a whole new one you didn't know mm -hmm. existed, you know. It's not like I'm always loud and belligerent and uh, that's no, that's, exactly, that's not true. That's exactly what that's. <laughs> you're always loud. That's not true. I'm not you're just always like, an onion, like always my thinking. You're always loud. That's not true. And... <laughs> Be fair. Like that's me. Like with you guys, because that's that's the way we are. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm I'm not loud or obnoxious. <laughs> now, Zach, I understand you're being recorded right now, but the other day you can see that hanging out with Scotty has made you a much more open pervert. Well, yeah, there is that. See, thank you. You know, and that's Scotty Slasher. A uh, depending on how you look at, it, he brings out the best or the worst in someone. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's called Cute Cat Roadshow, and it's going to be awesome. Zach, are you excited about Cute Cat Roadshow? Um. I'm um, some level of excited, yes. I'm not going to get drunk or fucked up at all. I'm going to be completely sober and uh, just nice and not profane. I have levels, damn it. You haven't seen me around like my grandma. Did you think I go out like, Grandma, let me tell you about this ball-sucking cocksucker I fucking dealt with today. I think Jesus you fucking say. Lord. I think you do. What? Yeah, I think you do. Nobody mm. wants to be that way all the time. I don't think Steve ever breaks kayfabe. No, What's kayfabe? I think you were outlaw rock star all the time. You know, that's what Kate used to tell people. Somebody was talking to her one time, literally, and they're like, uh -huh. how did Steven come up with the outlaw rock star character? And she's like, that's not a character. My brother's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, it sounds exactly like, like you can hear her voice saying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> um, 
You know who we haven't about, talked about? What? Oh my god, Bear. No. No, damn it. No. I mean, we, we should. The uh, the upcoming script that will be, um, I don't know, written last December. That's not what I said. You guys announced today. That wasn't my fault. Um, and that will be, I'll have that to you sometime soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we haven't talked about CD. Yeah. We didn't talk about the fucking coast. We forgot about him. Almost like he isn't important to the show at all. That's not true. You did write him out three episodes. I did not write him out. He didn't show up. He didn't even have a good reason. He did have a good reason. What? What was his good reason? Christmas with his family. I said a good reason, not a bullshit reason. His family lives in Georgia, not West Virginia. His family could have come down for the show. So what about CD, Steve? Oh, I, uh... I, we haven't talked about him. I felt like we should. Mm-hmm. I, I like his dick moves a lot. One you know, I, that was actually my idea. Oh, was it? How, how do we come up with Wake the Fuck Up? I demanded it. I know I wanted to change it. Oh, you both did. All of you did. Mm-hmm. You, Zach, and CD. And uh, we had like a, a very passionate back and forth argument where yeah. you guys really want something else. I really, really didn't want to yield. You're like, well, what if somebody wants to pick this up? I was like... Who wants to pick this up? Who? Who wants to pick this up? If somebody watches this show after they hear the title and looks at what they do, what we do and they want us to pay us money, but they don't like the title, we can just change the fucking title. But nobody's paying us yet. Right, right, right. I think that was the last argument I made. And by that point, I think you were tired and I'd gotten you drunk. Yeah, that was what it was. And uh, you had <laughs> sm- smoked a lot that evening, too, I think. Yeah, a lot of cigarettes. Lots of parliaments. I think you just gave up fighting with me. I think that's uh, <laughs> I think that's true. <laughs> I don't think I won you over. No, I, just I think, think, you gave I, think up. I said, listen, remember we like sat down and we had this conversation. It was a pretty deep conversation. And I was like, it's going to be hard for us to promote this all the time. I was like, I'm, I can only post this like once or twice a week on my Facebook page. I don't want my family and people getting offended by the title. But if you want to do Wake the Fuck Up, if you're confident about that, let's do that. And you said, I am. So that's why I decided to go with it. I'm very confident about mm-hmm. it. It's worked out pretty well. Yeah, I like the title. It's been our most mm-hmm. successful video series, like Hands and Downs over the interviews. And yeah. I like doing the interviews, but it's nice that we're finally at a point that we can do something like this. Mm-hmm. Where I, I do get belligerently, belligerently, belligerently drunk. And it prolongs a lot of simple ideas that should take less time. And sometimes I do stupid things that I shouldn't do because I'm drunk. But it's like pasties. No, that was goddamn genius. I do that all over again. I do like that we actually do get to sit down with people for a little bit longer. And a lot of the times, most of the guests, not all of the guests, some of them are, are, are sober, some of them are yeah. designated drivers, which is oh, cool. Yeah. Is. We're big fans of designated drivers. We need them sometimes, exactly. believe it or not. We, which is true. Zach's almost always the designated driver. Yeah. More than likely. Yeah. Uh, if any scenario that somebody was too fucked up to drive, Zach's that go-to guy. Uh, maybe twice a year you get drunk. Something like that, yeah. It recently happened one night when I came over, I was sober, and you were all plastered drunk when I got here. Yeah, I'm like, stone cold right sober. Now. I was like, yeah. this is bizarre. This is Tilly brought Soco different. that night. Yeah. So we were we took a couple shots of that, and it kind of got us fucked up. Right on. Feeling pretty good. Yeah, Tilly, <laughs> Tilly passed the fuck out very quickly after I got here. Tilly puked that night, he said. <laughs> so I guess he like fell off the couch and then ran to the bathroom or something. I think this is the first year that I've really like puked and not known about or been able to control it. It happened to you one night too. Yeah. We both recently woke up in our own vomit on our bed. Well, like, not really my own vomit. I just looked over and I think it was, was like a it was spittle. Of it was like, your spittle. Yeah, it was like yeah, I puked in the floor a little bit. It was Yeah. Very little, but still. I uh, I got drunk recently and woke up with Vomit all over myself, my bed, a chair knocked over next to me, my kitchen chair's knocked over, my jacket like 10 feet away with vomit on. I was like, what the fuck did I do? I remember walking into the house, walking past the stove and thinking, soup, there's a good idea. And then waking up hours later, like, oh, glad I decided not to make soup. That's like the only time I've ever been like that drunk, like yeah. A to B, don't remember what's going on. And uh, that's, that's, like, that's a cautionary tale right there. I mean, it don't is. drink, kids. Or if you're going to drink, don't get drunk and then go home and decide to cook because you'll probably pass out. Yeah. Um, that happened to my cousin Adam and uh, his roommate Justin. I was living with him at the time. Uh, and they uh, they went to this big party and came back and made some sort of like uh, cinnamon like muffins or some shit. And woke up 
and told me that they almost burnt the house down because they both passed out like after they put them in. Jesus. So it's never good to cook after you're that fucked yeah. up. No, no. But yeah, I uh, I was just like, I think maybe I got home and I'd just been sick and I guess I just walked back from the bathroom and I stumbled and knocked over the chair and tried to count my balance and just made a big mess and then just like, yep, time to lay in bed. That's all I could think. I was like, yep, should stop walking through the house now. What do your cats think when you come home all fucked up? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm I, a, I pay attention. I mean, I think that's probably the only time. I really never get drunk when I'm at my apartment. I usually just ever drink when I'm over here hanging out with you guys. I don't like to drink by myself. That's sad and lonely. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd gone out to the bar with a friend that night. And I'll drink for the show, and I'll openly get fucked up there, but I'm not going anywhere. I'll always stay here. Yeah. Um, I just went out to the bar with him to have, end quote, these are ter terrible last words, uh, but <laughs> lots of people said them, one drink. Join me for one drink. It's the devil on your shoulder, Saint. Come on, man, we're going to get you fucked up. So we go out to the bar, I get my one drink. Mm -hmm. And uh, sipping on it, he's like, let me get you another beer. And he needs a Jaeger bomb. I don't even particularly care for Jaeger, really, or a whole. Um, but I'll drink any free liquor you sit in front of me. Uh, so he bought me one, and I pound it back, and I kick back my double makers that I'd ordered and start sipping on the beer they bought me. Then he gets me another Jaeger bomb. Then he gets me another one. And he feeds me like six Jaeger bombs in the span of about an hour. He's like, all right, man, I'll take you home now. I am fucked out of my brain. Fucked out of my brain. Like, trying to walk up the steps, like... Fell down, like cut my hand. I had lots of little cuts all over my hand the next day too. I was like, go to my house. I piss, go back, stumble, knock down my chairs, lay down on my bed. At some point in the night, I start vomiting on myself, and then uh, I wake up. I'm like, okay, yeah, we're never drinking. Coming back to my apartment again. I was very embarrassed. I was just like, I hope I didn't piss my neighbors off. I hope <laughs> I didn't piss my neighbors off. Please, God, tell me I didn't piss the neighbors off. I don't think I made any noise aside from the initial stumbling, though. I think I just walked through house, mm -hmm. pissed, got quickly spinning, knocked everything over. I'm trying to play detective in my head because the truth is it's A to B blackout after I start walking to the bathroom the first 20 seconds mm -hmm. of entering my house. Uh, and then, yeah, at the end of the story is irrelevant. Waking the up part of the story is the end of the story, and that's just, okay, this was... Never again, only at Scotty's. At least if I get alcohol poisoning over Goodbye. here and vomit myself, somebody will roll me over so that I vomit into a trash can. You never really got that fucked up here. Well, except for that. Let me get fucked the up. The shows. Yeah. The shows. I get super fucked up for the shows, but for the most part. Aside from that, maybe once or twice on the night we came back from the smoker. That may have been the drunkest I've ever been. Really? What's the smoker? This where we got together after homecoming with our fraternity brothers. Oh, okay. oh, he was trash. You were trash. Like, like, I think that's the drunkest shit. you've ever seen me. I was oh, like yes. wildly drunk too. And like, that was screaming profane. Fell asleep at uh, the omelet shop. Oh, while we were Do eating. Do you remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We were like this big plate of food. Mm -hmm. Eat like, like three bites. Yeah. And uh, me and Evan were just looking at you. And he just passed the fuck out. Yeah. And so we're like into this big conversation about whatever. And it's like 10 minutes later, and we look over and we're like, wait a second. Is Steve asleep? And you're just sitting there sleeping. I was. Didn't even touch fuck your Fuck. Up. Jesus Christ. You were really. That was probably. That was probably the drunkest I've ever seen you. I feel like we'd, we'd been up on the. I can't think of it. We were up on the hill for a while. That, that, that drunk? Yeah. And like wild, I was wild. I was feral. Like there's a difference between my. I'm trying to be a fun, jolly, slightly inappropriate drunk on you our were show, a and angry like too though. So that was that was. Well, what was I angry about? The uh, was somebody that, had stolen, fucked up my class pal. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's. I wanted to. I that. wanted to destroy their towns and burn their men and steal their children and make slaves of their bones. We we cannot repeat on here the things you said that. Uh, that night. Yeah, let's, uh, let's leave it at that. But anyway. <laughs> no. What else you want to talk about, Steve? Who was with us that night? Was it Evan? Yeah, it was Evan. Oh, I like Evan. Shout out to Evan. What up, Evan? Hey, you read his book? Evan has a book. Yeah. Have you uh, told Stevie Looney that you loved him yet in this podcast? Stevie Looney, I love you. You always get really drunk and mention in the show. I think it's funny. I do. 
Stevie Looney's my boy. We have a social Stevie media Lin bromance. Stevie Looney was the first wrestling, like on camera, really before Adam Adam Pierce. But he was the first one to like just shut your whole thing down, yeah. like what you were doing. And he was like Adam Pierce, <laughs> pile driver. And you're like, what? Done <laughs> with you. Done. 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 I don't Only like that guy. Four. But we loved it. It was gold. Cool. I was, liked yeah, it. Yeah, that was a really good interview. Yeah. Even though the Aaron didn't like it, but. Oh, yeah, fuck We him. needed a controversial... Yeah. Did we just really blatantly say that? What? I didn't say anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Adam Pierce put you in your place. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, well... Be fair, Adam Pierce could kill me, and I believed it. Yeah. He was drunker than you would have, like, No, he me. wasn't. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Coors Light is what I'm drinking tonight. Is that what he said? No, that's what I'm drinking tonight, but he did have some Coors Light. Oh, yeah, maybe. So, yeah, I don't remember what you're talking about. No, he mentioned it in the interview. I don't know was if he it? actually did. Oh. Yeah, he mentioned Memory said oh. he may have consumed. How many beers? I don't remember him drinking at the show. Eight beers. He was like, I can't remember. Ten beers, eight beers, he said he consumed. Something like that. Oh, yeah, I do remember him saying that. I was like, I don't believe that you would take a contest with the maestro. So, uh, mm -hmm. something or other. Or did he say 12 beers? He said a lot of beers. Beer. Beer. I like the beer. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Looking back, it's a good thing Ann Pierce did not whoop our asses for just barging in there. It's true, because we, really we just, did barged just barged in there. Did we even ask him no, if we could no, do an we interview? Did not. We just decided we should. <laughs> and we I was a lot more brazen back then yeah. than I am now yeah. with the uh, wrestlers. He was a good sport about yeah, it, man. Really he was basically that. like, what would you say? He was like the Sting or the Hulk Hogan. No. Or the NWA at the time. No. Like, he was like, I'm saying the main man. Like He was the fucking. Okay, I'll give you yeah. that. He was the top dog. Yeah. He was the. Not not okay. those characters. I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. And hey. you just bur burst in and decided to interview him. That was pretty funny. But I loved his response, man. It was very genuine, and he... Like, Why oh, yeah. He was very me? articulate. Yeah. yeah. I, I like him a lot. He's very good. Yeah, I, mean, I loved, change of pace for I loved reading the goons on the message boards while they were streaming yeah, it live, and they're like, <laughs> oh, my God, Hensley's going to die. Mm -hmm. I'm like, let's go and interview Adam Pierce. Like, oh, no, Hensley's going to die. This is going to be terrible. One of them actually said... This is going to be awful. I can't watch. There's like a string of like five responses like that yeah. where they're just talking about my impending death. Mm -hmm. They it was really funny because they 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 knew exactly the only way it could possibly go and was perfect. It was perfect too. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because you have guys like Adam that could uh, uh well, of course Adam can think like that. He's where he is because he can think like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but we'd have other guys through the years that were uh, I guess a lot of them were newer guys. Mm -hmm. That I would insult up one side and down the other, or they tried to get me to play this way, I wouldn't, and they wouldn't put me in my place, no matter what I did. It was sometimes it was like beating a baby lamb to death. I felt so bad. I'm like, yeah. why will this person just not tell me what an idiot I am? This isn't rocket science. I'm acting like a jerk, telling me I'm an idiot. Everybody's already accepted they don't like me. The early days were fun. Yeah, I about back this shit. I didn't know what to do. Nobody was giving me any advice on anything. Right. So I was just talking like limitless, limitless trash. Mm -hmm. Just limitless trash. Before you were filtered. Yeah. Uh, if you can imagine that. Uh, the first time Adam Pierce came to Mountain State, <laughs> I remember you said uh, you called him a rat bastard. Yeah. And he also booed over his um, uh, promo. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I wish I had that was done that. Your very first episodes too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, very you know, early. Really, yeah. Us, really to be fair, uh, then, but. <laughs> I mean, I don't know in a perfect world if I would put somebody like me out there like my first time without any notes on behavior whatsoever. Yeah, but uh, I mean, that was that was the early days. I mean, nobody gave me notes for forever. I remember right. months later, months, literally, literally months later, uh, the promoter came to talk to me. He's like. Steven, we've had some complaints about your language on the show. I was like, mm -hmm. well, what's the problem? He's like, evidently you call the world champion a rap bastard. <laughs> uh, at the time, I was like, There is no way that promoter said it that fast. They, of course, he... Steven. Steven. Oh, that was creepy. At any rate... I appreciate that. He said, uh, you called the world champion a rap bastard, and people don't you think call. it's... I can't do it. People anymore. don't think it's right, it uh, et cetera, et cetera. We had more complaints over that than anything in the history of the show. I was like, is it, is, so what, I was like, but I didn't think that was too over the top. It wasn't really profane. It's kind yeah. of hokey. I don't get why everyone's mad. I'm like, 
He just kept saying it was the language. It was the language. And it was about a year later when I went back to watch all the shows, and I figured out what the complaint he should have been relating to me was, was that I was talking during the World Champions promo, which is a legitimately good complaint. A yeah. lot of people should have complained about it. This was a bonehead fucking move. But uh, the promoter was so uninvolved with his product, and it's it's the truth. And this isn't even talking, that he couldn't relate like the actually terrible part of what happened. Instead, he related one bullet point on a word that he knew somebody had mentioned to him said, and then forgot all the relevant association that went around when I was saying that word and what everybody was trying to hear instead. So for like a year, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? I don't even know what he's complaining about. I was like, rap bastard? That's that's what they're mad at? That I said rap bastard? I can't think of any reason in the world someone would pick up a phone to say once that they were mad that I said that word. But yeah. It was aired Sunday at like in the morning. Oh, so give me a fucking break. Jesus Christ. It was right before church at 11 a.m. Nobody called in because of that. Or was work. that during church? Is it 11 a.m. or 12 a.m. church? It was, it's a, a lot of it, I, I, I believe, was, was right around wrestling fans that, that were mad I was talking during the promo they to wanted to hear. Yeah, so which they be. should have complained about. And I mm-hmm. wish that he he had been intelligent enough or articulated in such a way that that was what he was telling me. But yeah. I don't think he really even understood what he was telling me. Mm-hmm. I don't think he ever watched any of the shows because a lot of the times I would get notes six to eight months after an episode aired, like, you're supposed to watch this to approve it before it airs. How right. is it How is it eight months down the line you're telling me what the problem is? I don't understand. Do you just, do you not watch the episodes? Are you that careless with your product? Do you just throw money away and say, oh, we'll see what happens. Possibly. Am I losing money this month? Let's keep doing the same thing with no change in direction. Burning money. Burning money. Did I go too far? No, no, not at all. I just... No, it's very, know. very... Not for search. us, I didn't go too far. Maybe for some people it may have, but... No, you know... I mean, it's from my perspective. I mean, I, I don't understand how you can run something, mm-hmm. be in charge of approving something, but not actively watch it to the point that you can articulate points right, right. immediately when something goes wrong. Especially if you're a wrestling fan. I mean, how do you watch it then approve it, then months later find out there was something you didn't like. Yeah. It's like you approved it without watching it. Does, does that sound smart when you spend money on something? I mean, he really could have told us to cut out anything, and we always went back and cut yeah. it out. And certain matches that I didn't want to cut that I ended up getting chewed out by certain wrestlers because I cut it, and that was like one of the matches I told control? him to keep in. Yeah, but you got to do what he says. But it was weird. It would, it would Instead of cutting something... Not important. He would always cut like a whole match or something like that. Yeah, yeah. something good for some bullshit story. And usually a pretty decent match. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was always a shame. And there were always, well, we're, we're firm, firmly into indie wrestling now. I'm into indie wrestling mode. Um, Zach, can you do me a favor? Can you, I need a beer. I feel like I'm choking on my own snot right now. You okay? I just need a beer. It? I'll make it. I need help. 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 To quote the great Robbie Hibbs, help! Um, also, Cullen. Cullen does that a lot. That's when really, when he gets really drunk, it, help me. <laughs> Amy Church, help me. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll tell you something that I hated on uh, on some indie shows, and it's certainly not a knock on any of the any of the boys in any of the shows, because you're very seldom you're in charge of the overall booking of a show. Yeah. But I remember you're, there was like a... Never there was one... In charge. We're not. We're never in charge of the There booking. was one day where we did a double taping somewhere. I want to say maybe we were down in... And we did. I, I can I can't tell you the card to save my life, but I can remember the circumstances that were saving me off. Mm-hmm. The uh, the first match, there was a disqualification. Yeah. Then came the second match, and it was a disqualification. Then came the third match, which was a countout, followed by the main event, which was a disqualification. Are I was you talking like, about every taping ever. No, no, I'm talking about one specific set where it literally was every match. Went like this for the first hour. I was like, okay, do I dare hold out hope for the second hour? And then the second hour came. Yeah. And there was a disqualification. I, just, I, lost my, I lost my shit on commentary. I was like, welcome to Mountain State Wrestling. If you enjoy a good disqualification after every match, well, we've got that in spades for you. <laughs> like every match, once again, I was like, if you like count outs, we got count outs. And like, by the third match, I was like, is there a referee in this building that can keep one match under control? One match. 
one match. Like I was just, you found out no one in the history of fans ever enjoys watching a show where that is the end of every freaking match. Right. I can't even understand it. I was like, this sucks. I don't I I I hate to say it because I love I love doing the shows and I love doing the matches all the time. Yeah. But by the end of the second hour, it's like this is fucking horseshit. Right. Like I feel so inspired right now, like you're not even trying to figure out how to build a program without just ending every match in a DQ. Like, can, is this really the only possible ending we could come up with? Remember when you filmed the uh, Ohio State, the NWA Ohio State mm -hmm. uh, show? Is almost all were clean finishes. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I thought that was weird, I guess, because we were Mountain State always normally had some sort of disqualification. Well, not always, let's be fair. I mean, was there ever there, a there show, was, there like was an hour a... show that there wasn't a disqualification? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure there was. Of? I'm sure there was. I'd be hard pressed to name all the endings of every match. Oh yeah, every show. yeah, of course. There, we definitely had shows where that didn't happen, but there was a slew where it seemed like that was like a regular way to end. Almost, yeah. At, to be fair, I would say forty to sixty percent of the shows, like all the time, it was it yeah. was maddening after a while. Yeah. I mean, like you have eight matches on a show, and six out of ten matches are disqualification. Mm -hmm. Fuck off! Like really, God yeah. Almighty! Like somebody can. Somebody can beat somebody to death out here and have get a. Right. Man, I, I just. I, I don't know. It feels like too much of the same ending to do yeah. all the same way. Don't do not do it, yeah, all at the same time because it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It, it did drive me crazy. But, you know. Because somebody's always better than the other person. I mean, that, those were. That, that was that was kind of a low point slump for me uh, in the booking scheme. I don't understand why that happened. And I mean, I I, I would I, I can't imagine that I would ever fully get like one person say, "Yeah, that was my idea all the way." It's usually fifty percent here, fifty percent there, and then somebody doesn't want to take a dive here, or take a dive there, or whatever. But I mean, there were a lot of bright spots too. I mean, we got to see some cool dudes too. Yeah. Um, and there's some good homegrown guys that I liked a lot. Uh, Ricky Shan, I always love Ricky. He uh, he's a workhorse, and you mm -hmm. the the first time you take a look at him, you don't think that either because he's not. It's not built like a guy that can move like he can move at all, you know. Yeah. You see a, a lot of guys with this build in the area not, not really doing anything outside of rest holds a whole lot during the match. Maybe some forearms and five thousand clotheslines, and mm -hmm. uh, Ricky can go out there and he can do a lot. Yeah, he really can. Um, he he was a good guy. Uh, Kincaid, who uh, everyone thought a whole lot of uh, whenever I first started already, he's gotten yeah. a lot better with time. Uh, yeah. Of course, Erickson, who's teaming with Damian Wayne these days, uh, Lords of Chaos, uh, and the very good tag team, but uh, Lance has even involved greatly since the first time we saw him when he started wrestling again. Mm -hmm. he'd, had, he'd had some time off, and uh, he got the ring rust off and trimmed down, started getting a lot quicker, and he's he's exploded. He's made a bit of an impact over the last year or two, mm -hmm. even since he went from having a program where he was actively featured. Uh, I oh, liked... Uh, Murdoch and Off, those guys were a yeah, joy were to see too. come down out of nowhere. And they were so new, too. Yeah, they were. Um, and all of a sudden, we had junior heavyweight division again. Yeah, that was cool. Specifically to uh, feature them, more or less. Mm -hmm. Where were they coming? They were coming from Pittsburgh, right? Dog. Dog. They were dog guys, if I'm not mistaken, weren't they? Mm, no idea. Huh. I feel like they were dog guys. Yeah, they maybe, were. Maybe I think from they like were. the training side. Yeah. That, uh, I'm pretty sure they were on Lawrence, fire. Lawrence, I think they were on fire and dog guys. Maybe so. But they were very good. They had a lot of matches in their belt. Yeah, I think Murdoch just retired, actually. Oh, did he? Just had his last match fairly recently. I think it was delayed because of snow. But, hmm. yeah. I like Dan. Yeah. Fairly quiet guy. I, I, he just finished college, though. Um, and I think he's looking towards his professional field now. I like seeing Chance wrestle. Yeah, Chance. And Chance is about the nicest guy in the universe, too. And I like Connor, too. Uh, we saw Connor sort of grow up. Yeah. Because yeah, he started as a rookie. Yeah, and you know... Yeah. And he had, like... Six months training. He started new. He was good then. So I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, then he just he got. There was a weird point. Um, it started at some point right around the time he and Scotty Rain start wrestling each other on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But something quickly shifted in his uh, ring style right around then, and he got so very much better so very quickly from where he'd already been. Mm -hmm. I do remember that because it was very sudden. Yeah. Um, I think and, he got more uh, agile. It seemed like I, I, I don't think because he was sort of stiff. I don't know that was it. Uh, I remember he said that he and uh, Andy had uh, sat down and they'd been watching Japanese wrestling together a lot, uh -huh. and he'd watched how they w had worked so snug in with each other and like a lot of the 
shots were a lot closer in, and he's trying to modify his ring style based around that style more. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think it changed a lot of the little things they did. Yeah. Because a lot of the things that didn't look necessarily look bad, but didn't look great yet, like start looking real good all of a sudden. Um, his feud with Maestro was really good. I love his podcast too. Oh, Matt is a masterful, uh, <laughs> masterful son of a bitch on the podcast. He gets people to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty! I thought we were ballsy. Yeah, I did too. The Johnny Blast interview <laughs> <laughs> was great. The Bulldozer interview was really fun. I enjoyed it a great deal, though. Uh, he's so laid back on the podcast, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like someday uh, he'll, he'll find great success when he blends some of that Matt Connor in with what he already has going on. Uh, it'll work out very well for him. It's It's been a great extension for him. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how old is Connor? Under 25 still, probably? I, I'd have to believe so. I mean, he's a young son yeah. of a bitch. He, he's, he's got some time left. He could, he oh, could still yeah. make an impact. A big impact. Here's some other guys you really like to watch. Like uh, I, did, I love Scott Rains. He's Scott a, Rains is a, is a, is also a really nice guy too. Yeah, uh, he is. He's a good guy. It, which uh, <laughs> he and I would talk such phenomenal trash. He was one of those guys that I love that I decided to hate on so much because he was so good at giving it back to me and shutting me up. He was. And uh, the time that he super kicked me is one of my favorite moments ever. I was so so excited and. Uh, mm -hmm. I, he he and I pitched to Stro like a little a little bit before uh the match like we pitched like that day like mm -hmm. maybe twenty minutes before the first hour started and we knew he was gonna lose the title I was like man it'd be awesome I could just come interview you after the match and talk a bunch of trash and you just super kick my freaking head off he's like that's a great idea that's great and he's like Stro Stro we got this idea and like he sold Stro on it mm -hmm. I think Stro may have been a little hesitant for a second. But uh, this guy was very enthusiastic about it. He's like, yeah, yeah, good. Just do it. Just do it. You guys just do it. So uh, I, I didn't even tell John about it. Uh, and John loved it. John was going ape shit with it. He was very happy. Mm -hmm. And then I was Looney Tunes for the rest of the show. Which is funny. I think Carl came out for his match. I said something about asking where J.C. Dykes was. I think he was over at WBCW at the time. Yeah. And I was just like, Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. That man isn't here anymore. We'll never talk about this. That man in the spine per area. Like, what the fuck the fuck off? Like, everybody get their panties out of goddamn twist. And then, did you miss? Do, do you, can we talk? Of, let's talk about the whole WBCW thing. Is it, what is w? it was called? What about it? West Virginia Championship Wrestling, right? Yeah. Like, remember, like uh, the promoter had a huge feud or whatever with him, did but he? the production crew had. Didn't give two shits. We was like, we wouldn't like trade guys. Like, we didn't give a shit. Yeah. It's like, who cares? I don't, I don't know. I don't this know. company really. should do their thing. We should do our thing, and we should combine because they're going to see more people in more towns. But I don't really know, man. I, I mean, really, they like, saw like at the that. end of the day, it always comes down to promoters, and for the most yeah, part yeah. in the area, promoters are never willing to work or never really willing to work together. It's like everybody has all this talent, but we all run run. Fifty separate. They all want to run separate shows. Mm -hmm. Not we. I'm not running shit. Uh, but everybody's running all these sh separate shows in a market where there's really not a huge fan base right now. I mean, mm -hmm. the wrestling industry really is in a boom period right now. I mean, sure. Ninety eight when Monday Night Raw is playing six point sevens every week and WCW is playing seven point eight. That was a good time to run an indie promotion because you can make some money through the high schools and stuff. Everyone's a wrestling fan. I mean, right now, when they're yeah. pulling 3.2s, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I and mean, there's not a not a whole lot of casual wrestling fans right now. And it's, it's really hard to sell them on an indie product. Yeah. Where fans are skeptical there's, there's anyway. Lot, there's tons of indie promotions. But, uh, no, I wasn't really around for that time period when Leonard or whoever, whatever, had a falling out with whatever, though. Oh, I wasn't either. I'm just saying that they continued the feud during the when was that? our tenure. I don't, I don't think it was so much a feud there. I think it that's was just, because if somebody tried to work for him, he would get upset. Well, that's every promoter ever. They always get mad when somebody but works somewhere else. Somebody's working in fucking Princeton and somebody's working in Shady Springs. That's just bringing more people to that area. You know what I'm saying? Like To me, it just makes people more famous. The more somebody is seen as a certain I think whatever. Kind of, I don't know to if me, it's fair to look at as promotions feuding so much as mm -hmm. usually it's promoters. More than anything. Like yeah, that's what promoters. It, not promotions, I'd say promoters, yeah. I mean, they definitely want to keep their boys on their side. And they're always worried about losing people. But to be, I guess to be fair on that end, the other side is how many shows do you show up for where you have a stacked card that doesn't change? Like, 
within like every 20 minutes leading up to bell time. You're like, is mm-hmm. this person here? And then like half your fucking roster doesn't show up. Yeah. There was a certain time in Mountain State where we had stacked cards for a while, too. It was yeah. really, really good. Mm-hmm. Well, we had a lot of guys from outside traveling in, too. Like, yep. that was around when Bad Karma was coming through. Uh, of course, Thomas Rodman was traveling with them. Murdoch and Off were coming down. Uh, a really short uh, stint with Eugene was fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he wasn't as consistent, but yeah, okay. uh, but he was fun to have down there. Uh, My Fu came through around mm-hmm. that same time. And a lot of our, uh, our, our regular guys were working through that time. That was probably the biggest period for the active roster, yeah. too, it seemed like. And they were at the top of their game, it seemed like. to me. I mean, they were way better than they were, I guess. They weren't past their prime. They were, like, sort of in their prime. Well, I mean, I'm not, not saying they're still not, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just seemed to click. It was a good period. Basically, when, like, something awful was watching, it seemed like that was our yeah, some mean, of our was... best period. I think after that, we had some good shit, but... At least they had anybody watching it. Yeah, they, just, yeah. they weren't watching it like they were, because... They were upset about a couple things that happened, but... Yeah. Out of our control. Yeah. You know. Still, yeah. it was fun. I mean... Yeah, yeah. it was fun while Just time. coming in, like, just, you know, having a beer after work and watching them, like, watch it and talk Even about after it. that period, though, there were still a few cool things that happened. Uh, oh, yeah. Actually, quite a few cool things. I mean, uh, there was that fun period where we were getting a lot of the good... Uh, we got Ricky Morton. Outside. Well, Ricky we Morton. We got Ricky Morton yeah. down, which was around the same time that we had guys like Sean Timpers coming down, uh... We had that Unleashed pay-per-view, which was phenomenal. Yeah. That was uh, the IPPB. Uh, I like that card. Shows, was our, yeah. That was one of our best ones ever. I love that show. Yeah, we Dean and I were matches. on point that night, too. That was probably our best time together. Yeah, it was a good show. Was, it was a fun show. I really thought Jason Kincaid had won the North American title, too. Like, Dean and I were so genuinely beyond excited. We were we we bought, we bought it. We bought it hook, line, scene. We were like, holy fuck balls. I didn't expect Kincaid to actually... When I didn't think I didn't like, oh my god, I was out of my mind. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And we got a call, and then like they referee reverses his decision. I'm like, fuck balls life. <laughs> I'm genuinely mad now. Throw chairs in the ring. And Chase Owens. Yeah, Chase is a good one. Uh, we had some good tag teams come through there off and on mm-hmm. over time. It's cool to see like you're filming a dude like Chase, and then he's on, what was he? He was on WWE. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was just, like, developmental talent or whatever at the time, right. but I can see him going on to something else, too. I mean, that dude's fucking good. Yeah, yeah. But that was cool as shit to see. He's like, holy shit, I was filming this dude, like, two weeks ago, and now he's on WWE's, you know, what was it, Raw, uh, Monday Night Raw. Yeah. So. Hmm. Wrestle against Ryback, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And some other fella. Mm-hmm. Got destroyed. That was still cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Cool to see. Yes, sir. Good times. Good times. Well, you want to wrap this up now? Yeah. yeah. It's been uh, an, hour, an hour and yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Well. Sign us off, Scott. This is uh, Scott Slasher. I'm going to sign us off. Yeah. Um, Steve. Yep. Zach. See ya. Uh, we'll, maybe we'll try to see, let's see, let's try to do another podcast, say, after the next taping. Sounds good. We'll just, so we'll be uh, like drunk already. Mm-hmm. I think this might not happen, happen, folks. But this we're probably gonna, won't happen. Yeah, well, we will really. This may never happen again. Never. Who knows? But this could be a. This will happen again. This may. <coughs> yes, sir. Just like oh my god, there. <laughs> Just like oh my god, there. <laughs> Get the fuck up out of here
Wait, <laughs> 